have you ever played a game which isn't great, but it has a few features in it that make you go, wow, that's really clever? Well, that's exactly what happened to me when I was playing a game called Shadow of Depth, a demo that Chili Room released recently. I'll be totally candid with you. It's not the most amazing demo I've ever played, but it does have a couple of clever little features, or I guess maybe choices that they made, which I found really compelling. So much so that I figured why not share them with you today. One of the things I like the most is how they kind of handle inventory, or I guess how they don't handle inventory. Like almost every game with combat, your character has two resources, health and mana. Health is used to, you know, not die, and mana is used whenever you cast spells or abilities. There are also potions that you can consume that allow you to recover those resources. Those potions, you know, they drop from creatures you kill or can be found in chests scattered around the map. Potions then spawn on the ground and you use the potion by running over it and pressing a button. So far, nothing really surprising, right? Well, the interesting thing here is that they will remain on the ground until your character moves on to the next level. This turns the whole level into your inventory, but it's temporary. And that's really clever. Now, I don't know why they chose to do it this way. Maybe they just didn't want to have to build an inventory system. But you see, inventory systems have some problems that come with them. They slow the game down where players bring up the inventory to manage it. They can cause situations where players save potions forever instead of using them. Or they force players into decision points of, should I keep this or should I keep that? And it's too overwhelming because dependent on the size of the inventory, there could be a lot of things in there. So they're evaluating many different items all at once. All of those problems are fine if that's what the game is about. Take Backpack Hero, a game which is basically entirely designed around managing your inventory. It's great for that, but for a top-down action roguelike here, inventory management is likely just going to slow everything down and create undesirable breaks in the gameplay. By using the level as the inventory and removing all of those items when you move to a new level, it reduces the overhead on the player of having this permanent inventory to manage. If the player is low on health, they open the map and find a potion that they've left behind. They then travel back to heal. It stops players from feeling like you should save potions. We've all encountered the situation where you saved all those potions till the very end of the game and then realize, I should have just used them. What well, doesn't happen here? Now, of course, I could see this being a problem when they want to create a boss fight encounter, which, you know, you might just kite the boss back to a potion or an array of potions that you've got stored on the map somewhere. However, they have these zones that lock you in, forcing you to survive the fight without simply, you know, being able to kite the boss to that location. Building on the whole, the level is your inventory thing. If you want to sell an item that's on the ground, you just move up to it and hold the button down in order to sell it. It just sells it right there and then. No overcomplication of a limited inventory you, or having to take it back to a vendor. You just choose the moment in the run when you want to sell something or not. This is also helpful as coin is very run specific. You only have it for the duration of that run, basically until you die or finish. You know, I kind of like it when games just embrace being games. Too often developers might think, oh, it's this weird thing that I don't sell this item to a vendor, but it's actually fine. It's a little quality of life element that smooths down the process. I remember hearing a story about World of Warcraft where the, they were trying to figure out like how to bring your mount into the experience. And there was this, the mount runs up and you get on the mount and everything. And they realized, let's just summon it straight away. It's what the players want anyway. It smoothed that out. It made it really easy and it was fine. No one, did you think about where did the mount come from? No, because it's a game. On top of this, maybe even to support this, there's another feature, which is really nice too. There's quite a bit of backtracking due to the potions or, you know, sometimes due to the way the level is laid out procedurally. To mitigate this, they just speed up your character gradually when you aren't in combat for a while. Of course, it doesn't happen immediately. There's a ramp up to it. And as soon as you use an ability, you stop having it. It's just a nice quality of life little feature. I kind of wish we'd done something like this in Diablo, to be honest. 
I'll add one more thing to this list, even though it's not really like a design feature per se. Many times people talk about making a vertical slice, but there's a lot of ambiguity about how far to go with that slice. How much quality does it take? How many features? Well, what's necessary in order to build that vertical slice? Well, I'd suggest that this game is actually a really good example of a good vertical slice, even though it's a limited demo. There's enough gameplay here to show that the game has potential. The core systems feel reasonably well implemented. They're a little bit unpolished and requiring, they, they require a lot more work to get across the finish line, but they're good. They're all there enough that you can get a good understanding of what the game might be. The rest of the UI and meta systems, even though they aren't available, could actually just be stubbed in and sort of fake locked out. Imagine they put the portraits in for those other characters, but you, they're not, they didn't actually build them yet. They're just representative of what the future might hold. There's value in having them here so that a player can see, oh, okay, there's more reason for what I'm doing beyond just the solo runs that exist. It's actually worth putting those kind of things into a vertical slice to hint at what your plans are, even though you haven't fully implemented them yet. Look, it's far from great, but it has some really good interesting design elements to it. And this is why we should be playing games that aren't AAA or the best games out there. The combat's kind of mushy, the combos are honestly a little hard to pull off, it just feels like a lot of repetitive button pushing. And it may get really repetitive unless they find a way to mix it up and give value to going deeper into the game. And also a lot of the buttons and just the mapping itself, you know, they feel overloaded or kind of confusing. Regardless of the downsides, they made a game with a couple of clever features. I'm glad I tried it out. The key takeaway for me is that by not including an inventory at all, they made the game better, which is great. I learned a lot from that. It's kind of like design by exclusion, and I get into that a lot more in my Lethal Company video, which I'll link up here for you. For now though, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.